<laughs> yeah. Dad, you might tell her the story about your finger. Your mother, what she did. That's interesting to know. About, about the, the what? Your finger, about the cob, uh, spider webs. Uh, about the spider webs with your finger. Oh, remember? oh, when I was, this was in Texas. I was just a little bitty kid while the uh, dad had chopped wood and left, it, left the axe out there. And so I went out and um, mother was working the cabbage at the time to help, you know, the weeds. And I got the axe, picked it up to chop like that, and I chopped this finger off right here. And mother, mother got spider webs, an old Indian remedy, and, and put the spider web and wrapped it, and again, it grew back together. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Mm hmm Yeah, she had a lot of Indian remedies from uh, her, from my grandpa, who was a, he was a Jackie Indian from uh, across the border. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he, she knew a lot of the natural yes. remedies and things. Yeah, like we that. didn't know. I didn't know what a doctor was until I went to the Marine Corps. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So she took care of you guys. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, she had all kinds of uh, regular, uh, what's the word I want to say, medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, come out. And my dad was pretty much, with his, his situation was when we were little, if we stumped our toe, he'd give us a dose of castor oil. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> About once a month, he'd line us up and give everybody castor oil. I just worked. We were all pretty healthy. <laughs> yeah, I think that was kind of popular back in those days. Yeah. I don't think kids liked it very much. Though. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget that. Wow. What, uh, what other memories do you have about your mom? What memories? Mm -hmm. She was a wonderful, wonderful lady. She worked hard. Just as calm as she could be. She never got excited. Mm -hmm. My dad's the one that get excited. Yeah. But my mother was very good. Uh, she, uh, well, to raise kids, 10 kids, I guess she had to be deal. Mm -hmm. you know, she was a hard worker, mm -hmm. a lovely, lovely mother. Yeah. What do you remember about your father? My father was pretty GI, and I think if I counted the spank as I got, but I guess I was pretty honoring. So they tell me. I had a lot of energy, and still do actually. And uh, so, you know, for instance, like one time um, I bummed a cigarette off of one of the workers, and I was just a kid. Well, he told my dad, <laughs> and so. My dad used to call it dancing. He'd say, well, like this particular time, he says, Ernie, after a while we're going outside and dance. Well, what he meant, he'd take his belt and he'd hold you, and then we'd just go around and around, just spanking me. I got wise to that because he, I was, I was pretty honored. I put on an extra pair of pants. You know, and then I didn't feel it. But when he started spanking me, I'd just scream. And I actually didn't bother me because I had all these clothes on. Well, <laughs> he saw me pulling these extra pants off. <laughs> so he said, you know, Ernie, I think we'll go dance some more. This is after I pulled them other pants off. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that didn't last very long. <laughs> but he, he was GI. Very strict. No. Uh, no. Very smart man. Very smart man. But he uh, he he become an alcoholic in the later years. Uh, when we come here, he'd go to Whipple. In them days, as I understand, they didn't really have the medication for the lungs and what have you. So, of a morning to cut the flame, they'd give him two shots of whiskey. And so um, he got hooked on drinking and what have you. 
in his later years, he uh, he uh, he become an alcoholic. That's too bad. Mm -hmm. But he had his good times too. I remember when I was small, he, he'd drink one or two beers and get pretty happy and he had the Vitrola. And I remember the song, he, it was rings on your fingers and ring on your toes. And he'd get me and hold me on his feet and then dance with me. And I remember that. Yeah. But then uh, when he was in a bad mood, he was pretty G.I. But I always had it coming. <laughs> okay. So. Now I want to I want to start talking a little bit about uh, the war years. Okay. Um, what do you remember about when Pearl Harbor was attacked? Where were you at? Uh, I was working with uh, Boswell. Uh, I was driving tractor mm -hmm. uh, when they, when it come bombs. Yeah. Uh, that's here at Goodyear, right there at Ocotillo. How did you hear about it? Uh, well, at the time, it didn't penetrate too much, you know. And, um, of course, and then, then the draft come on, the boys start going. My older brother went to the National Guard, and Harold joined the Navy, and so it was my turn to, uh, to go, and so, uh, um, I was too young, but so Dad had to go and sign for me. And then in the Marine Corps, you joined, and you had to wait until there was a complete, com a complete uh, company, um, you know, 60 men to a platoon. So I waited, I think, uh, a couple of months. I worked at a dude right there in Phoenix for a while while I was waiting. And then, of course, before that, I had gone to junior college uh, to become a pilot, okay. which I did become a pilot afterwards. I, right. was, I had cool. my own plane and everything. Okay, so um, what year was it that you went to the junior college? Did you get your GED? Yes. Yes. I got that afterwards, after I got out. Okay. So you went to the junior college what year? Uh, I think it was 40, 41, along in there, 40, let's see. 41, uh, uh, 41, 42. It was about 41 or 42. I have all the records there mm -hmm. someplace. Yeah. Okay. What was it that made you decide to go there? Because I wanted to be a pilot. And so uh, the government sponsored uh, 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 a class. They paid for everything. So I would, uh, I had a, a great boss and uh, he would help me with my lessons, the meteorology and all of that. In fact, you know Chuck, his mother was his teacher and she helped me. She taught me of evening. Um, Nickel, Chuck Nickel. His mother, she had uh, polio when she was a younger lady and had the bad leg, but a lovely, lovely person. So was his dad. Yeah, so she would help you with some of your uh, classes, some of the things that you were learning? Yeah, well, she helped me with my uh, uh, navigation and my meteorology and all. I, of course, understood that. And uh, I got into uh, formulas and uh, my boss, Burke Stroud, was an electrical engineer. And so uh, I was working work, work with him. He'd, uh, he'd say, Ernie, you got your lessons with you? And I'd say, yeah. And he said, well, let's do some work. So we'd sit down and go through a, 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 a problems, you know. Mm -hmm. And he helped me on to then. Yeah. So, so when I graduated, I did OK. I got a 78 out of, uh, you know. I had to have at least a, six, a 68, but I made a 78, and I was qualified then to go as a glider pilot, okay. as a warrant officer. Okay. So how long did your class, was your class was just for a year? The at class the college? for a year. Okay. I, uh, Bert would let me off early, 
and I would leave Goodyear and go to Chandler, catch a bus, go to junior college, I think it's two hours or three hours or whatever, and then I'd come back, and then I'd be on the job at seven next morning again. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a long day. Yeah. yeah, but I wanted the education. I was hungry for education, and um, I just didn't get the chance to go to school because I had to work. Did you find uh, did you find that it was hard when you when you started taking those classes because you only went to third grade? Did you have did you struggle a little bit? Well, uh, Mrs. Bernhall taught me quite a while. She she I was smart enough to go ahead and take a test and make it, you know, to go to to go to school. Good. Yeah, and uh, of course uh, with. Uh, uh, with uh, Chuck's mother and 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 my boss, why? Well, uh, Everybody helped you a little bit. Yeah, so I, I got a pretty good grade. Okay. Yeah. Now, what what was it that made you decide that you want to be a glider pilot? I didn't want to be a glider pilot. I hold wanted on, hold to on be on a, a second, regular. Hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The, the microphone went out. Something. Yeah. Hold on. Talk for me, please. I I I I wanted to go oh, to it's school. On my end. Hold on, hold on. To get a uh, to get an air force. Oh. Hold on a second, please. Hold on. Is that okay? No, 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 no. The batteries. See, he's got a he has a problem with the microphone. He's not picking up your voice. Oh, it is. So he's got to fix that for a minute. So hold that thought. Do you need to go to the bathroom, Dad? Take. Do you need a break or? No? I'll take my. Swallow my pop. Yeah. Done this much talking in a while, have you, Dad? <laughs> okay. Are you picking me up okay, Ernie? Yes, you sound great, but hold on these uh Side, even though it says it looks good. Okay, let me hear you again, please. Okay, you wanna? Say where we're where now? Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're good. Oh, okay. why I wanted to be a pilot? Yeah, why did you want to be a pilot? I don't know. I just wanted to fly, and uh, so um, this this uh, deal come up with the government to go to school because uh, there was a shortage of. Pilots, and so uh, that's why I went to that. Uh, okay. But I didn't. I didn't anticipate going into the army as a glider pilot. Uh -huh. I had that opportunity because I made the grade uh -huh. and was qualified for that. Okay. But I wanted to go in the Marine Corps okay. and at Marine Corps Air Force. Now, um, when did you enlist in the Marine Corps? What, when when did you enlist? I, 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 it was a, a, a short time before January of 43. Uh, I had to get a release from the draft board, and then my dad had to go in and sign for me. How old were you? How old were you? Well, I had, to, I had, I, I think I was uh, about 18 and a half or something like that because I had to sign for the draft when I was 18. And um, so, um, but I think I started school when I was 17. I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time trying to remember that. Okay. But uh, I, I know that I, I originally went into San Diego to the Marine Corps and was sworn in here in Phoenix in uh, January the 3rd of 1943. Okay. So you went into the U.S. Marine Corps? Hmm? You went into the U.S. Marine Corps? Mm-hmm. Okay. Why did you choose the Marines? Well, my older brother was in the Army and my next to him was Harold was in the Navy and I thought I wanted to be in the Marine Corps. Which, what's the name of your older brother that went into the into the army? Richard Carcula. Richard. Now he's on that he's on the, on the, on that board, the Chandler deal. Okay. I think Harold is too. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. 
Okay, so you, you went into the Marine Corps and you uh, entered service on January 3, 1943? Mm-hmm. Went to camp, uh, went to San Diego. Okay. And that's where you received your basic training? That's where I went to school, communication school, for uh, six weeks, I think it was. Okay. And then when I graduated from there, uh, I went to uh, Camp uh, Pendleton for my advanced field training and what have you. Okay, can you describe, what do you remember about communication school? Well, you know, <laughs> all I can remember is I gained a lot of weight because I wasn't used to just sitting, you know, and then uh, I gained, I weighed to 212 pounds when I got out of school. <laughs> and uh, it was, it was uh, other than I was hungry for education, um, I enjoyed it. Yeah. And besides that, for exercise, I had, I had done a little boxing, okay? Uh, maybe this is not a little bit off the subject. These camps, these camps, you know, uh, labor camps, are not labor when they're, when they're for picking. Well, if it rained, they couldn't go out and pick for maybe until 11, 12 o'clock. Well, uh, there'd be a bunch of us kids, so these guys would get together and give us a nickel to put on the boxing gloves. And we were little guys, and so we, we they entertained them. They entertained themselves <laughs> by watching us kids fight. <laughs> so I got into it, and I fought in, 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 in Madison Square Garden in Phoenix as a as a youngster. Really. And then I represented in the Marine Corps. I represented uh, my uh, my platoon. Mm -hmm. I was 182 pounds. I fought. I fought in uh, I fought in uh, San Diego. I fought at uh, at uh, Camp Middleton, Camp Pendleton. Uh, okay. Um, now, what do you remember about being in Camp Pendleton? Being a what? At Camp Pendleton, what do you remember about that? Well, I I, I it was nice. Uh, you know, the, the only thing I really <laughs> hated about it, when they fired the artillery into the desert, they'd have a fire. And then we'd have to go fight the fire that night, put it out, and then uh, and then we went out training. You know, um, of course, at first, like I say, they put me in the Raiders, which uh, was a little bit tough. They wouldn't. You had to live off of the ground, off of the camp. You go. We had to go steal from the other camps in order to eat. Mm. Tell me, tell me about the Raiders. Well, I, I was there just not that long because I got out of the major. <laughs> the major got me out of there because I was fussing too much because I, I was supposed to be in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. You know, I had all the qualifications and everything, but uh, I just didn't get it. Can you describe what the Raiders were? The just, Raiders. Can you describe what the Raiders did? Yes, we went out and we lived off of the out in the desert. Uh, you know. And we'd go raid, practice and raid in some other outfit and what have you. Okay. Uh, How long did you do that? Not very long because I got out of it as quick as I could. And the major got me because I was, I, might, I don't know, I, I was in probably three or four weeks. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And um, where did you go after that once you were transferred out? They sent me back to San Diego. Uh, and then uh, I got a three-day pass, and I come home, visit, and then went back. And, and that's when I thought they were going to send me to the aviation like I was supposed to, but they put me aboard ship. That I'll never forget is the President Polk was the name of the ship. And uh, I think it was July. Of 43 that I was aboard that ship going to and we went we went uh, we went to uh, past the equator in fact I boxed during the time we were in the equator and uh, 
landed at uh, Water Canal, and and of course we uh, we had been at, we had been assigned to certain where papers and what have you, and we went out and. Uh, and that's where I wound up is uh, in uh, 155s, 1st Battalion, 1st 155s, and, and at that time it was 1st Marines, it was the 1st Marines, and then they split that and, and, and made it uh, uh, 155s. I wish I, had, I wish I could find them papers. Okay. But, uh, so you think it was it was the first Marines and it was the one five five battalion? Well, it was the first Marines when I got there. Okay. And it was a it was heavy artillery, and then they made that into a third amphibious, the third amphibious. Yeah. yeah. So that's who you ended up being with was a third amphibious. The third amphibious, yes. Okay. What was your military specialty? Well, supposedly communication, because I went through school. However, I become a BAR man, a B machine, a machine gun, B a Brownie automatic machine gun. So B A R. Hmm. Is that B A R? B A R. They call it bar. Mm. Okay. And what did you do in that in that position? Well. We stood guard for the outfit, you know, when we were in, when we were in foreign, in, in, in at the front lines, so to speak, behind the front lines, because there's the rifles. Uh, why at night, you know, we had camps, posts that we stayed in for uh, any infiltration of the enemy, you know. And so uh, did that and, you know, just other things. Okay. Try to sneak out and find, look for souvenirs, <laughs> flags and what have you. Okay. Um, well, let's go back a little bit. I want you to tell me a little bit about your trip across the ocean in July of 1943 when you got on that ship yeah. and how did you feel um, when you left the U.S. and you were heading out into the Pacific? Well, of course, I'd never been in the ocean before, but uh, um, I was fine. I never did get seasick, uh, but it was, uh, I guess there was, I don't know how many thousand men aboard this still. We had to <coughs> soon learn, you get up in the morning, you go get in line, and you stand in line, you get through eating, you go back to your bathroom or what have you, come back and get in line again. So you're standing in line 60% of the time hmm. to eat. But I got smart, and that's why by boxing, I didn't have to stand in line. They just put a, 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 a tag on my arm and walk right on in and eat, but uh, boxing. And then uh, I got on work duty at, uh, once or twice too, and then you wouldn't have to stand in line. In fact, while I was on, one, on work duty, you go downstairs and load on groceries and stuff in the net and put them up to the top. Well, they dropped a case of tomatoes and they hardly look out below, and I looked up, and it caught me on the side of the face, broke my nose. Ouch. You know, I had a headache for about three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah. How, so Little things like that. Yeah. How did you feel about leaving the U.S. and going into where, you know, battle was happening? Well, I, I, I look forward to it. I look forward. You know, when I, when I was at Camp Pendleton, this is part of the deal while well, I was there. I boxed there, and there was this professional boxer who was a, a heavyweight. He was a DI. Well, of course, I volunteered to go box, and I boxed with him, I think, three or four times and, uh, at 182 weight. So he didn't want me to leave. 
And he, he told me, he says, Ernie, he said, Carcula, Carcula, I can get you out of going overseas. And you can stay here and, and we'll box. And I said, no, I want to go overseas. So I, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't stay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of the heavyweight's name. And, uh, so, you know, you, 